What is up bros, me Josh here, and today we're bringing you a video on the first British cruiser to come to World of Warships, the HMS Belfast. This thing has been getting tons of hype, and there's good reason for it. This thing is a really, really good ship. It's really cool. It's got all kinds of uh, cookies in the cookie jar. It's got all kinds of tools and the, the Swiss Army knife. It's got this thing is a blast to play. Uh, I think there's a couple things that may, that require it to be really, really good. This is the kind of ship, though, that's going to be really good in the, in certain people's hands and not really the best ship for, I think, a lot of people as well because there's some ups and downs of the ship. But let's kind of dive into it. I'll get to the strengths and weaknesses a bit later, but let's go over this fantastic ship. Now, for a Tier 7, it's actually doing okay with 35,700 life. The downsize is 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 armor is not that good it's pretty fragile you can actually overpen this thing fairly easily and that's kind of one of the downsides we get that later torpedo protection four percent it's a cruiser you're gonna get wrecked anyway uh main battery uh four times three so 12 shots going out which is the awesome part uh 12 shots every seven and a half seconds pretty dang good secondaries i actually was surprised that the secondaries are actually okay on this thing um, I'm not even running AFT and it's 5.3 kilometers. So you're going to be over six kilometers, almost six and a half kilometers on, on your secondary. So that's pretty awesome. Main battery at 15.4. That's about as far as it can get. Um, AA defense. Now it's AA is pretty solid at almost 60, 58% and three and a half but there is or five sorry five kilometers but there is no aa consumable so it's pretty stagnant um so if a cb wants to punish you it's going to but you can knock down a couple planes as they're flying over or something like that maximum speed 32 and a half knots so pretty quick turning circle radius of 680 meters rudder shift of seven seven point seven seconds uh it's a pretty maneuverable ship and you kind of need that for the type of ship that it is Detectability, this is without a 15 point captain, so keep that in mind, guys, of 9.9. .9. So just under 10, you're going to get down into the 8s, which is insane to think about. I think you get to about 8.9 right around there. Detection with the 15 point captain, 8.8, 8.7, which is kind of crazy. You're getting to the detection of a Kiev almost. So it's pretty freaking stealthy. Detection from air 7.3. So Let's just look at this screen. This is the screen why so many people are calling it OP. This thing has a ton of tricks that it has up its sleeve. Not only does it have the ra uh, repair, it has sonar, it has smoke, and it has radar. Which basically means you're going to be fat fingering all different kinds of things on accident. So just kind of be aware of what you're hitting. I was wanting smoke and I was hitting radar. I was wanting sonar and I was hitting smoke. Blah, blah, blah. But this thing is a DD's nightmare. If there is a destroyer within 8 kilometers, it's going to die to this thing. 100%. You can chain the uh, hydroacoustic to watch out for torps, spot them if you're close enough. You can pop radar right after, vice versa. This thing can absolutely punish destroyers. And on top of that, it can drop smoke. So the smoke's pretty awesome. The only thing is, be sure you're going slow because it is only seven seconds of smoke, which basically means you get two puffs of smoke. You need to be going very, very slow. It's very selfish smoke. You know, you get into like a destroyer, you can leave a big line. Uh, you, you know, even in the flint, you can leave a big line of smoke to cover a bunch of ships. You are covering your own ass and that is about it. And... If anything else is going to sit in that smoke with you, it's going to be a prime target for torpedoes because they know it's a relatively small area that at least one ship is in. So just keep that in mind. Be sure to go slow, 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 slow. Almost come to a stop. I almost I was joking on last night's stream about the current meta of this smoke. It's basically beat yourself, pop the smoke, and then just back up because it kind of worked because you definitely won't drive out of it. But, you know, this is going to be one of those where you pop on the side of an island, use the island as cover, and then pop out smoke. Maybe keep sonar up just to make sure you don't get torped, and then kind of bail out if you need. So, the smoke is active for 103 seconds, which is pretty solid, but, like, a, or, uh, is up for 103 seconds, but only active for laying it down for 7 seconds, which is basically the equivalent of 2 puffs. So, just keep that in mind. This thing slows down really, really poorly, and it takes a while for it to slow down, so you will 
I guarantee you the first few smokes, if you do, if you do end up buying this ship, you will drive right out of it. So it's kind of scary getting used to, but once you get used to it, you kind of know how to use it. Um, sonar, uh, relatively solid sonar, torp acquisition, almost three kilometers and ship acquisition, an extra 4.2 kilometers. So that's pretty solid, especially if you're pushing into smoke, um, looking for a DD, um, that's actually pretty nice active for 94 seconds. So it's actually not pretty nice. And the radar, um, active for 25 seconds, about eight and a half kilometers. So this is like, if you get a DD that's within eight kilometers, it's going to die to you 25 seconds because then you're going to push into them. You're going to pop radar, and then as soon as you're done with radar, you're going to pop sonar. So you're going to be able to dodge his torps and most likely gain the ground on him because you're actually relatively quick for a cruiser and agile. So pretty insane there. Now, you also, at tier 7, you get an 8 uh, tier 8 slot, which is kind of crazy as well. So this is kind of what I ran for the, main, uh, for the upgrades. I ran main armament mod 1. I ran the aiming system mod 1. Propulsion. I wasn't really sure, but I think that's pretty solid because you end up kind of running away a lot with this thing. And so propulsion is kind of nice to even have with the cruiser anyway. Steering gears, you want to be as agile as possible because you are going to be that DD hunter. And then, of course, uh, concealment. You could go steering gears, but I think the special part of this ship is its low detection. And then when you get to a 15-point captain with the concealment expert, you can actually stealth fire at like 13.6 kilometers, which is crazy. The Leningrad, the tier seven destroyer that just came out, stealth fires at about the same range. Your cruiser at tier seven, launching 12 shells downfield at 13.6 kilometers. Yeah, you have about a Cleveland arc in between a Cleveland and I'd say an Atlanta on the arc. So it's, it's not terrible, it's doable. Um, I'd say it's probably closer to Cleveland and you're launching that out. So pretty nuts i haven't played it i've only just got the 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 demo expert which is kind of the when this ship really tends to shine but i haven't played it with the kings of one expert i'm very excited to uh stealth firing seems amazing and uh, being able to just absolutely wreck people um especially battleships which you're very scared of with this ship that seems to be uh be super nice um let's go back to the main bat so this is one thing that i think you really really need with this ship is you need demo expert this ship is is pretty good um it's it's pretty solid uh it, it it's not pretty solid it's amazing against destroyers against cruisers it kind of has a tough time because the arc is relatively high and because i mean the trajectory or it, the ap shell velocity is only 841 um so it, i would kind of if you're used to the cleveland arc now i guess you'd be okay with this it may might be a bit higher than that um but you start out with only 9% fire chance, which is okay, but you're pretty weak against cruisers and you're mediocre against battleships. Uh, the thing is, I was getting little to no citadels from about eight kilometers out with AP. Now AP is pretty pretty solid in like broadside battleships, but I was getting, because of the arc, I was getting very few citadels from a long, range, long way away. Now up close, of course, AP is fine. But um, the range, so this thing kind of becomes into an HE spammer, in my opinion, especially when you get Demo Expert. So this ship is a completely different ship uh, when you get Demo Expert. So kind of race for that for that 10 point, get that Demo Expert, and then you are a very, very strong ship. I think it, the game I the game before I got Demo Expert, I think I did two or three fires, and then the game after, and of course RNG-based, the game after... Um, I played, uh, I got Dumb Expert, I think I got like 15 fires or something like that, did like a hundred and some thousand damage. It's pretty nasty. But let's kind of dive into the strengths of this ship and weaknesses of this ship. The strengths of this ship is you are a DD's nightmare. And this is why I kind of like, I think Wargaming's kind of doing a cool thing of making a lot of specialized ships. Um, you got ships like the Sharn Horse, which is really good at kind of delete, Sharn Horse Dunker, you know, they're not like, mainly battleship killers but they're really good at killing like destroyers and especially cruisers and you're getting kind of this ship which is it's an amazing destroyer killer this is i would say easily the scariest ship i want to i would go against with a destroyer remember when i first played a destroyer when this was getting tested where it wasn't even able to be out i was like i don't know i was like i was like man oh the belfast cool does this thing have radar? It does, and he completely hunted me down. I wasn't sure of it. Now, a lot of people aren't going to be really know that yet, so it's going to be kind of easier. So, only being the third ship, 
at tier 7 with the Indy and the Atlanta having a radar, this has the extra boost of the smoke as well as the sonar. So in the right hands, this thing is going to be an absolute beast, especially with a 15-point captain demo expert, because you're going to be able to pump out some mad damage. Um, so that's that's pretty awesome. The rate of fire is good. HE, I think this thing kind of turns into an HE spammer. Up close AP is very, very good. I was ripping 6-7k salvos on broadsides battleships, and I think I 100 to zeroed a New Orleans at about 4 4k, which, you know, yeah, who cares, but in like two salvos... It was it was pretty solid, so uh, that's fun. The downside of this ship, one, it doesn't have an AA consumable. So if you're running with the CV or you're going against a CV, you're kind of a prime target because CV players should start to look for the Belfast because one, they know that they want to keep their DDs alive. So you're going to be a pretty prime. You're the only uh, cruiser at that tier that does not have some kind of AA ability now you do have decent AA with a 58 percent or 58 rating but you don't have that ability to spread the torps out and spread dive barometers out so that's one major downside the other major downside is its armor when i was playing a couple of games i was getting absolutely shredded by ap even when i was like driving straight away angling straight away you just get absolutely pummeled um we'll switch over to the armor layout really quick there is almost <laughs> there's little to no armor on this thing. There's a, there's a little bit in the uh, the citadel armor. Other than that, you got a little bit of deck armor. This thing is pretty fragile. One of the downsides is is if you're going against let's say a Pensacola front on or something like that, you're probably gonna lose that fight. You have to play this thing like a giant chicken. You really do. You got to kind of post up behind an island, use the arcs. Um, like, I, like I was talking in my stream last night, you have to play this thing like you're playing in Atlanta almost. Or Flint if you have it. There's only a few people that have Flint right now. But um, you have to play this like in Atlanta. If you ever played in Atlanta, you know if you get hit, you're in trouble. Or, or at least getting shot at, you're in trouble. Low armor, high shell arc, use cover. If you use cover, use your smoke, and then use your radar in the right situations and... and you know, get a DD that's out of position or something like that, this thing can be an absolute monster. So, like I said before, this thing is going to be crazy good in the right hands, but I'm worried about this for kind of everybody because this thing cannot brawl. It's a specialized ship. It does one thing really well, and that's kill destroyers. Other than that, you have to play very cautious. So that play style might be kind of, I would say, maybe boring to people. Um it's not like a Miyoko where you can go out and just kind of light everybody on fire and just kind of laugh at it. This you have to be very careful. If you start taking shells, you're going to take massive damage. Um, and really, I think people are kind of going to recognize that. Belfast is going to be a prime target for not only CVs, but also battleships and other cruisers because it's so fragile. Putting that aside, though, I freaking love this ship. It's a blast to play. Um... I would say this is a must buy. Well, maybe not a must buy, but I would say this is a definite buy for me because of its one, I like uniqueness in ships. Two, um, it does some things really, really well, and I'm excited to see what this does as a 15 point captain. And three, it's just a blast. It really is. How can you get. You got sonar, radar, and smoke? That's crazy. That's craziness. But just a heads up, guys, this thing is super fragile. Um, Maybe before buying it, I would watch some people play it first because it has a specific style of play. But other than that, guys, this thing's awesome. I have no idea when it's going to come to the stores, but it is a freaking fun ship to play. And I'm looking forward to playing with and against you guys in these things. So that is it for me, guys. That has been the HMS Belfast, the crazy good Tier 7 uh, British cruiser, the first British cruiser in the game. Pretty exciting, guys. And let me know in the comments below if you guys have played against the Belfast. What you guys think about the Belfast? Maybe watching somebody's stream. Or just let me know what you guys think about this style of ship or this uniqueness. Is it OP in your opinion? Let me know in the comments below, guys. That's been it for me. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.